The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark chapter 6 verses 1 to 6 Jesus left and returned to his hometown with his disciples. The next Sabbath he taught in the Jewish meeting place. Many of the people who had heard him were amazed and asked, How could he do all this? Where did he get such wisdom and the power to work these miracles? Isn't he the carpenter, the son of Mary? Aren't James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon his brothers? Don't his sisters still live here in our town? The people were very unhappy because of what he was doing. But Jesus said, Prophets are honored by everyone except the people of their hometown and their relatives and their own family. Jesus could not work any miracles there except to heal a few sick people by placing his hands on them. He was surprised that the people did not have any faith. Hello everybody and today you join me in my hotel room in Tokyo. Um, I was up here for a meeting yesterday and in a few minutes I'll be heading back home, back to uh, Kobe again. This weekend at St Andrews we are saying goodbye to our longest serving congregation member. We are saying goodbye to Linva. Now she has been here in Japan for 45 years and before that she was in Nairobi in Kenya and before that she was in Singapore and before that she was in London before that she was in Bristol and before that before everything she was in the Rhondda Valley in Wales so I wonder where does she feel at home probably in all of those places actually. But maybe over the past few weeks Linva might have been wondering about that too, home, and about all the good things and perhaps the not so good things in all the places that she has lived, and about what it will be like to go home. Because there is always something different there's always something special about going home, isn't there? It's probably the place that we feel most comfortable in. Probably, not always. It's somewhere we're surrounded by family and friends that we know. It's somewhere where we use and people use a language or dialect that we understand. And it's somewhere where we're immersed in a culture which probably seems natural to us. It's just home. And when we go to that place, when we go home, we likely expect that, we expect those things, and also we expect to be welcomed back into that place that we know and where we are known. But if you look at our Gospel reading today, See what happened to Jesus. In the town where he knew everybody and where they knew him, where everything was familiar, his welcome wasn't so warm. Because for the people of that town, Jesus was just somebody ordinary, somebody normal. He was somebody's son, the carpenter, you know. He was nothing special. And that was how people looked at him, which meant that when he started teaching them, when he started expounding scriptures and so on, they didn't get it. The two things didn't add up. Because the people of the town remembered little Jesus who used to run around in the street and play in the dirt and get into trouble. They all have tables and chairs made by this guy. And they see his brothers and his sisters around town all the time. And that was the problem, because those images and those connections and that knowledge didn't compute, as we would say. 
they couldn't see beyond that. They couldn't see beyond to who Jesus really was. So the next words that came out of their mouths were, he's the carpenter, he's Mary's son. What does he know about what he's saying? Who does he think he is to say those things? Now our translation says that the people were unhappy because of what he was doing. Other translations go further and they say that the people of the town took offence at him. That's harsh. The people of the town, astounded at what Jesus was saying and recognising him as one of their own, instead of being pleased or proud of this boy done good, they were offended. And the reason? Because they could not open their hearts and minds to accept God working through that guy, to accept the teaching and the prophecy that he brought, because he was too close, because he was one of their own. He was too familiar. They didn't expect it from him, and they didn't want it. He was nothing special to them. He was just Jesus. And the result, as Mark goes on to tell us, was that Jesus couldn't do any miracles there, except heal a few sick people, which is, <laughs> sounds a bit of a miracle to us. But Jesus couldn't do anything except a few healings. And he was surprised that the people didn't have any faith. How sad. That was his feeling about his own people, the people more than anybody else that you would expect to understand. But Jesus didn't want their respect. Rather, he wanted to give, and he had so much to give and so much to share with them, but they couldn't accept it because for them, he was just a boy from their town. And as Mark again tells us, prophets are honored by everyone except the people of their hometown and their relatives and their own family. Prophets are listened to. People of God are respected and taken notice of except by the people who they grew up with. And that issue stopped the work of God taking place. Now we know who Jesus was and we know who he is because we know the rest of the story. But I'm sure that at times, probably, we act in just the same way as the people of that story in that sometimes we can't recognise God's presence amongst us in the familiar, in what we're used to. Maybe we search for God in the holy or the sacred. Maybe we expect to find God in people who wear funny collars or in churches or in meeting times when we listen to the Bible. But how about when we're queuing at the city office waiting to have some documents stamped, or when we're in a heated meeting with our colleagues. When somebody says something or does something, do we just see it as that? Or do we recognise that there might be more to it, that perhaps it's actually the Holy Spirit in action? Right now, we need to remember that amidst the pandemic that we find ourselves in and all the unfamiliar and the unwanted things that come our way, God is present in everything and is working amongst us and through those all around us. And if we don't see it, maybe it's because we're looking in all the wrong places. The people of Nazareth today lost a great opportunity to be ministered to because they didn't listen carefully to Jesus. Somebody they just thought was an ordinary guy in their midst. And we are called today to take notice of that and to learn and to be able to open our minds and to open our hearts 
to finding Jesus afresh in the ordinary and in the familiar all around us and then to listen to his voice and to receive his love. Now Linva has been very familiar to us here in Kobe for a long time and as she goes home perhaps feeling a mix of uncertainty and excitement I know that we will miss her her smiles and her laughter her singing her kind words and her friendship but I believe that we have been lucky enough to experience the presence and the ministry of God's Holy Spirit working through Linva. A girl from the valleys who did good and who did and who does God's good. And I'm sure that it doesn't stop with Linva because I'm sure that we all know people, other people around us who are familiar, who are ordinary in the nicest sense of the word, but who can teach us so much about God's goodness and God's provision, who can bring us God's comfort and healing and encouragement, and who can help make the everyday special. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for all those who teach, guide and support us. Help us to recognise in them your spirit and learn of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.